Good morning, everyone. Today is week three, day two. We're working on our morning algos. And I have some stuff to show you guys. All right. So every day, and this is going to be a trend that you noticed here at the dojo, we'll introduce a new little rule, a new little tool that you can use in JavaScript, and then an algo where you can apply it. Okay. It's like you get you gain a new skill and then you have some place to apply it. Um, it's not necessary every time. I mean, if we show you something using a while loop, right? And then we use a function saying, hey, you can use a while loop in this function to solve this problem. It doesn't mean you can't use a for loop to solve it. So this is not the only tool that you have. This is just one of them. All right, so let's go over uh, some, some uh, sorting in JavaScript. How can we sort an array in JavaScript? Okay, so we're going to go over the dot sort, dot sort, okay? And uh, just, just as a preface, before we get into today's algo, it is a toughie. It's going to be tough, uh, tougher than yesterday, but we have some cool things to learn, and um, it'll be good anyway, okay? We want exposure is more important than solving it at this point, okay? So how does the dot sort work? Let me increase my screen size and font so you guys can see. How does the dot sort work? So here I have a string, var string array, and I have apple, orange, and banana. I have an array of three strings, right? Apple, orange, and banana. What happens if I do this? And hold on, let me just do something real quick. I know I'm pulling it out of view, but I got to make sure. I'm not giving you guys a solution when I run this. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Sorry. All right. So back to this. All right. I want to run this. So I'm going to open my terminal. Terminal open. I can just go here if I don't. If the shortcut's not reliable right now. Okay. So if I go here. And then I'm in this folder. I need to go to the folder where I have this here. So if I say CD week two day, week three day two, enter CD algo, node three. Okay. So here I have apple, banana, orange. That's what I console logged when I said string array dot sort. So this took my array of strings, apple, orange, and banana, and it sorted it in this order, as you see here, apple, banana, and orange. What order do I see this now? What are we seeing here? It sorted it alphabetically. Sorted it alphabetically. And how did it sort it alphabetically? How I mean, what we know how to do it intuitively because we've been doing it so long since kindergarten, grade school. But what did it? What did it do? Can you break it down for me? What did it look at? Maybe just the first letter of the string. First letter, yes. So it compared the first letter, and then it used that right, because P is not higher than A, the second, and uh, well, A is higher than R, but that's not the way it's sorted. Okay, so I want us to just take note of that. I want us to just take note of that. Okay, so if I say var array one, and I have this array of numbers now, and I sort this array, what happens? Let's do it. Mm. It's treating these numbers just the way it was treating those strings. It's sorting them as if their words only looking at the very first character and not caring about what follows after. So it's not truly numeric order because one and then 100,000 and 21, 30 and four, that's not the order uh, of least to highest numbers, right? So we wanna be cautious when using dot sort. We wanna know how it works, um, especially when when we're just uh, console logging an array and we want it to sort, we got to be aware that it's sorting alphabetically the way we would sort words. Okay, so I want us to be aware of that. Now, 
We're going to come back to sorting, but let's pivot for a moment. And I'm going to just introduce briefly what an arrow function is, okay? Now, this is not a lesson on arrow functions. It's not like you have to know what an arrow function is today. I'm just going to introduce it because you're going to see it. And then later on in the JavaScript stack, they'll give you more about what uh, the arrow function is and how to use it and what it does. But let's just take a look because we might see it. We might encounter it already. An arrow function is a concise way to write a function in JavaScript that was introduced in ES6. So there's been different versions of the JavaScript that we're learning to write. The latest version, the latest popular version is ES6. So E stands for ECMA, which is the original name for JavaScript. They changed it from ECMAScript to JavaScript. And so that's why it's ES6, it's version six, okay? It was a compact alternative to a traditional functional expression with some semantic differences and a deliberate and deliberate limitations in usage. So there's some limitations in it, and then there's some cool things about it as well. But the, the limitations are deliberate. Here's a brief summary of how to, uh, an arrow function is different than a normal function. Okay. Arrow functions are always unnamed. Okay. So they don't have names, but can be assigned to a variable. So it has the same name as the variable. Okay, arrow functions cannot be used as constructors. We don't know what these are yet, but let's just skip this line. All right, let's skip it. Don't worry, we don't know. We'll worry about it later. This, the, this keyword behaves differently in arrow functions compared to regular functions, okay? The this keyword, remember how this works? It binds, it's an anchor. It works, it behaves differently in arrow functions compared to regular functions. In arrow functions, this always represents the object object uh, that's defined, uh, that find the arrow function, okay? This always represents the object that defined the arrow function. While in regular functions, all right, this is what we're used to, this represents the object that called the function, okay? Uh, we don't have to, again, I'm just, giving you a brief overview. We don't have to fully digest and understand this. This is why I'm showing you this, okay? Because when we see this, we know this is indicating a function. So if this is a function, what could this be then? Can we guess what this might be? Would those be the arguments? Yeah, the parameters, the parameters, yeah. Yeah, receiving arguments. So in this case, when we see this here, array.sort, and then an open parentheses, and then a, b in the parentheses, and then the arrow function a minus b. What could this mean? This looks a little bit cryptic, right? Array.sort, we know what that did. That sorted something in alphabetical order. But what's this inside? a comma b within this parentheses, and then a function. Okay, what does the function do receiving a and b? a minus b okay now this is different it's taking a and b in a function and is it is subtracting b from a right it's an a minus b so let's let's just absorb what this looks like we don't have to again fully understand this but let's figure out what it does let's figure out what it does okay if you want if you have time after you solve today's algo, you can go and research why this works, but we're just gonna learn how it works, okay? We don't have to know why, just like when we're going in an airplane, we don't have to know uh, why it's in the air, but we know how to go in there and how to go out. We know how to use it in an airplane, right? So we're gonna figure out how to use this, not exactly why it works yet, but let's look at this, all right? Um, Array, and here I have, you know, the same array we, we saw before. If I do sort on it, let's see what happens. Okay, if I do sort on this one, I just need to press the up arrow and I get my last command. Oh, am I not in the right place? No, I'm not. I am not in the right place. Let's start over. Here we are. This is my previous terminal. Okay, so if I press the up arrow, enter, Okay, 
Now it's sorting the negative numbers. Okay, it's sorting the negative numbers. But then it goes back to its old habit of saying 1, 100,000, 21, 30, 40. So that's still not in order, but at least the negative numbers are in the proper order, right? So there, at least the negative numbers come before the positive. So we're getting closer to sorting. Let's look at this array three. We have array three, we have 1, 30, 4, 21, 100,000, and then negative five. When we console log array three dot sort, and then after sort, we do that thing that we just saw there, a, b, arrow function, a minus b, what do we get now? Let's see how this, let's see how this works. Now we get some sorted numbers within the array, right? So this is our desired effect when we are wanting to sort numbers in array from left to right in ascending order. Okay, again, like I said, we don't know, we don't have to know um, how or why this works. We just have to know that it works and that we could use it this way. We could say array three dot sort and then take this in. If you guys finish today's function and have some extra time to research as a group, I'd like you guys to look this up and try to understand it and explain it to the rest of us. That way, you get a better understanding explaining it, okay? Uh, but I don't want this to be the focus, so don't go straight into try to, trying to understand this. Just use it the way you saw me use it. If you have an array, then you can sort it this way by saying array, name the array dot sort, and then in the parentheses, you enter A, B, parentheses, arrow function A minus B, All right? Don't prioritize understanding this part until you finish the function. All right, so let's comment this out. Just want to make sure you guys are with me. Did you guys see how I use that uh, sorting uh, an array of numbers? How I how I could sort it using a b arrow function a minus b. Okay, you have to practice a little bit. I mean, you just all you have to do is console log some array some numbers to see how it works differently. This is working differently than sorting uh, the way we saw it would. Uh, sort this array, apple, banana, orange, not just looking at the first characters, but looking at the whole thing. All right, so now let's get to the algo. All right, and I know this is going to be a tough one, and we have to cut it off exactly at time today because we have John's class, so let's just do our best, okay? That's all the goal is today, to do our best on this one. We want to write a function, by the way, this is one is called three number sum. So we want to write a function that takes in a non-empty array of distinct integers, just like yesterday, remember, and an integer representing a target sum, same as yesterday. The function should find all triplets in the array. Now this is different, all triplets in the array that sum up to the target sum. Now we need to write a function that finds all the triplets and sum up to the to sum up to this target sum and return a two-dimensional array. Remember a 2D array, an array of arrays? We need a two-dimensional array as our output of all these triplets. So here, as we see, here's an output of all the triplets for a target sum of zero. So given this array, what three combinations of numbers add up to zero. So we have negative eight, two, and six, right? Negative eight and two, that is negative six, and negative six plus six altogether, zero. So we, that's one zero. Negative eight, three, and five. Negative eight plus three is gonna be negative five. Negative five plus five is gonna be 10. And then we also have this one here, right? Negative six and four. One is going to be five, oh, negative five, sorry. Negative five and five come out to be zero. All right, so how do we do this? This one is similar to yesterday's, right? But not exactly the same. Now we have, oh, we have to seek out triplets. We can use our, oops, we can use our target sum to help us find um, the missing values that we need, but something that would be really helpful to solving this 
in an efficient way is first to sort the array. Okay, so that's why I introduced today's um, material about sorting an array of numbers. Because if you sort this array, you may have an easier time finding uh, all the triplets to add up to the target sum. Okay, so I'm gonna cut off the time limit today really hard so that if you guys don't solve it, I can explain the solution and then you guys can revisit the uh, explanation in, in a recording later if you need, okay? So I'm gonna stop it now. Uh, I think this is good. I'm gonna copy paste this prompt into Discord right now. So I know I sometimes am a little slow to do that, but not today. It's there, so I'm gonna create the groups. And you guys are good to go. All right, everyone. Who would like to share their solution? If you have any. I saw one group got one. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller, <laughs> come on, somebody! I wh whose group was it? I was in group room four with. I can I, I can share ours. Okay. Um. Uh, so we pretty much did. Uh, we did three. Uh, we did nested for loops, similar to how we did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um and just created the extra variables along the way mm -hmm. uh to hold each uh index that we're going to be checking mm -hmm. and then once we got to our if statement instead of doing just x and y like yesterday we did x y plus z uh to see if it uh hit our target sum and then afterwards we sorted the if these added up to the target sum we sorted the numbers in an array and then uh, or we put the numbers in an array and then we sorted that array before pushing it into our triplets, mm -hmm. our empty triplets. Um, and then once we got all of them, we sorted all the contents or we tried to anyway, we thought that this would sort the uh, arrays nested in the array and then return triplets. And then if you console log it, you get, uh, oop, one sec. You get uh, all of our numbers, but like you mentioned, these two are kind of a repetition. They're the same numbers, just in different order. Uh, but we think the full answer would have had four triplets, I guess, because these two are the same. Or these two are, are on their own. This one and this one are the same. And then this one and this one are the same. So if there weren't any doubles, it would be four triplets of uh, arrays within the array. Okay. Okay. Nicely done. I like the hard work that was put into this. Maybe it was not the cleanest answer, but we'll figure that out right now. Now I wanna ask, did anyone else get the same or similar solution using a similar method? Uh, my team got something similar, but we also had the issue where it spit out similar or the same answer multiple times. Okay, okay. So sometimes you have to work out uh, something the hard way in order to appreciate uh, an efficient solution, all right? Because if I were to give you the instructions to do the efficient solution without you guys struggling uh, making a triple for loop, then, uh, you know, then I'm, it's not it's not a genuine way, I think, of, of learning, right? You have to kind of struggle with something the hard way before you can um, let the easier way stick with you. So the, here, what, here what I have is this function three number sum. So it takes in the array and takes in the target sum. This is the array and here's my target sum. And then I sort it from the very beginning. I array.sort and I'll show you why. So there's a reason why I needed to sort it. It's because I don't want to do that triple for loop. I want to avoid that triple for loop and I'll show you how I can avoid that sorting it. So here now we are on uh, line 95. It says const triplets. Let me just change these cons to var, okay? Var, everything is gonna be var. I'll talk about why some variables are let and some of them are const another day. Do it another day. 
uh, tomorrow, I think, or the next day. So let me just change these to bars. These are all just different names for variables. How they work differently, I'll show you another day. Okay, but we're back to this now. Var triplets equals empty array. And then we say for var i equals zero. So this is my first for loop. I'm going to loop through the array with my index starting at zero all the way to the end minus two. Okay, this is different. Why minus two? Why minus two? Well, it's because the moment I step into the array, I have these two things, which I will, well, they're commonly called pointers. Okay. So I, when we initially start, starts at index zero. So here we are. This is at index zero. Let me just, I hate having a little marker. So this is I index zero. And then we have left equals I plus one. So this is L for left and it equals I plus one. So we're going to say I plus one. All right. So this is pointing to here. And um, then we have right, which is array dot length minus one. So right is going to be here all the way at r dot length minus one. Okay. So I have index left and right. So these three indices, uh, or I can call them pointers. I is an index pointer pointing to the very first one. Left is just to the right of I and right is at the very most and at the right. Now with these three, I already have a triplet I can check. I can check with these if we are at the target sum already, right? So what's 12 and three? That's 15 plus six. Okay, that is 15 plus six is 21. I am way over, right? So, well, we need to, that's why we needed to sort this array because if we leave this unsorted, we would not have any logic to use these pointers. So, so let's go ahead and assume this is a sorted array. So let's hold on a second. So before we continue, let me just comment this out for a brief moment and then just do one of these. On this array. So I'll just say var r equals this thing, just so I can show you guys a, an example here. Um, okay, so I need to, my terminal. Okay, let's clear it and then run this. Array is not defined. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me console log this. John's cohorts joining here. Okay. We're they're welcome to join, but we're gonna get started at the time 1005. Okay, so here we have our sorted array. So here we have our sorted array. Let's move this back. Hello, John's class. Welcome. We're still working on our algo. So just uh, hang tight with us while we finish up. And we do have to take a break. So 10.05, we're going to get started. All right, so five minutes left. That's plenty of time. Let's look at this array. Here we have our index, like we said. Now it's in a sorted. And then we have left and right. Okay, so we have index left and right. So I wanted us to see that in a sorted array. Because uh, here we are, let me let me bring this back up. Here, we're back into our um, function. Well, 
var left equals i plus one, var right equals array length dot one minus one. And then we're going to uh, array dot length minus two. So this is where we stop our function. So let's write in our indexes, indices one more time. So we have i left and then right left L. Okay. And then we say while left is less than right, while left is less than right. So when left is not less than right, then we break out of this while loop. So let's see where this begins. It should, um, it should end, I think about, so this for loop here, so it should end here. It should end here. So if left is equal to right, then we would have finished. But if it's not, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a variable called current sum, and we're gonna make it array at i plus array at left and array at right. Okay, so these three add up to the current sum. Negative eight, negative six, and 12. What are those three together? Negative eight and negative six. What are those together? Negative two, I think. No, negative 14. Negative I was adding all of them, sorry. That's no, okay. Negative 14 and 12. What is negative 14 and 12? Negative 14 and 12 is going to be negative 2. Okay. So if we get negative 2, we know we are below our current sum. So what we can do if we are below our current sum is move our left a little to uh, one index to the right. So that's what this is doing. It's saying if current sum is less than the target sum, move left to the right because it's sorted. When left moves to the right, we get a higher value. So now we have negative eight, one and 12. We can compare this to our target sum and see if we have this as the return. If it's equal to the target sum, if by chance our target sum is equal to index left and right, then we push to our triplets array, triplets.push, array at i, array at left, and array at right, okay? Otherwise, if we are at a higher value than our target sum, then we move right to the left one, okay? So then right here, and then it's no longer there. And then we subtract because we are getting a lower value moving right to the left. And that's why we say array.length minus two, because we have a value already accounting for array.length minus one, and it's the one on the right to begin with. Okay. So that's how we solve it without a triple for loop. Then we just return triplets at the end. Anyone have any questions? It's it's a it's a um, interesting solution. You're gonna have to just play with it, digest it, look at it for a while. It's not gonna come all at once. Uh, didn't for me, okay? But it's more efficient than using a triple for loop, and I think you guys can appreciate it better now that uh, you see that a triple for loop can cause you to run into some errors, as you've seen. Well, Josh, um, can I share my screen real quick? Sure. Yeah, if you want to share for a minute we got to close out soon yeah i'm so sorry i just wanted to know like let's say we did do it in a triple for loop right uh-huh bought the three arrays yeah if i just added in the thing the sort function before everything else yeah would that sort it? uh well you can try it i don't know uh you can always try it any question that you have in programming and you know that you can test it why not test it so we want to think like scientists, experiment like scientists, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Th uh, welcome, John's group. Uh, you saw a little bit of our closing of our algo session. So let me go ahead and uh, stop this recording.